people are always talking about how the world is getting smaller, which is really ridiculous. Um, the world was very small when I was born, and it's been getting bigger ever since. <laughs> It became a room, and then it became a house, and then it became a, a, a town, then, then it became a society, then it became a country. Um, gradually, as I've grown, the world has got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, uh, and, in, and, in this, and, and on my first journey in the 70s, it got um, enormous. And, uh, and so the... the the, the difficulty is, is, is to keep up with this and try to find some way to, to comprehend such an enormous uh, and, 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 and varied kaleidoscope of, of, of things and people and stuff. So, um, I did my I did my best on the first journey, particularly, to to try to identify the the differences between people, to to try to understand what what it meant to have been uh, colonized by by Western countries, to uh, what it what it meant to to be living in a country that was almost empty and like Australia and that was gradually filling up um, uh, and, and it became very <coughs> important for me to have so, to find some kind of moral bearing in, in all of this, you know, what, 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 what was good and what was bad basically. Um, and was there anything you can do about it? And I suppose the first real challenge on the first journey was Brazil. Um, discovering that I'd landed in, my, landed in the middle of, a, of a, a, a huge population of people who were desperately poor and they were governed by, by a murderous dictatorship and, um, and were sleeping on the grounds of the of, of, of the cathedral all around me is when I when I came out of the prison that they put me in because they thought I was there to do something about all this uh, they're very conscious of people trying to to um, start rebellions revolutions things like that um, the priests that I met in Fortaleza in Brazil gave me, really gave me a good education about um, how, to, how to give practical help to people. But of course they were re rebels against their own church and, uh, and there's always this battle going on between people who want to help, who want things to get better and and larger organizations and hierarchies like the church which want everything to stay the same and you see these <coughs> tremendous struggles happening everywhere. This was also happening in Chile and other parts of South America. So, so the, 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 the big job was really to try to grasp how, how, how all this was happening and, and, and what it meant to me personally and how I was going to write about it. And, and I suppose what I ought to be saying is, is that if, if, I hadn't had, if I hadn't been going out there to write a book, it would have been very, a very different experience because the, the, the need to be able to understand and sort things out and, and think of how to write them in an intelligible way is, is really what occupied my mind most during the times when I was just dry, riding across long landscapes and long roads and so on. Uh, and it, thank goodness I had started this journey as a writer 
because it, what, it was what really gave me the, the impetus to, to, to try to get my arms around this enormous world that I was traveling through. Which is a bit of a joke really, because I only saw a tiny bit of it. Uh, when you, you know, you actually think about it, I mean, just one straight line around the world where, you know, what did I see? But I, but you can extrapolate, you can, you can make judgments <coughs> on the basis of one experience. You can imagine very well, even I can imagine how things might be in China if I went there, because I've seen enough of what goes on with people in poor, areas in difficult circumstances <coughs> to know what it would be like. But the second journey, which was 30 years later, more or less, um, was a, a terrific challenge because of the huge e explosion of, of population and the, and the information explosion as well, and so uh, it became almost unmanageable, really, and all you could fall back on are really rather tedious, tired conclusions about how this is going to end, because there are just too many people, given the kind of social problems that we have. I mean, I'm quite sure that if if some super god were to come down and <clears throat> and make and give us all orders about you know which bit of land we should stand on and how many buckets of rice we're allowed for a week and so i'm sure we could all manage very well but given the sort of people we are who are always fighting each other for more of something um, i don't see how this will all end it doesn't look very promising to me and and it was a hard experience to to travel through this and recognize the the uh, the problems that we have ahead of us and not to be able to see any solution to it it's very depressing for on on a social level and i'm really very glad that i'm 81 years old and not 11 years old because i think it's going to be a very tough world to to live in in the future. However, having said all that, I'm having a wonderful time <laughs> and, and I know a lot of young people who are having a wonderful time and, and, and I think in the, in the end, um, if, you, if, if you put your faith in individuals rather than in societies or social organizations or ideologies and so on, there's a lot of good stuff still to come. Okay.